My name is Gareth Morgan. I'm a professor at NYU in uh, New York City. Um, we've been doing uh, some important research, I think, using um, single cell analysis. It's a kind of really fancy technology for looking at the supporting cells in the bone marrow. And so we've been able to look at patients that are being treated with daratumumab combinations and then trying to look at the cells in the microenvironment that associated with response. And so, you know, a lot of the time people focus on T cells and we saw T cells that could predict good and bad responses. But a really important population that doesn't get talked about much are the monocytes that live in the bone marrow. And it turns out that there are very big changes in the monocytes that correlate with good response. So if you have a certain type of monocyte, you're predicted to have a, the, the best responses and vice versa. So I think this sort of information tells patients that it's not just features of the tumor cell that mediate response. It's what the tumor cells do to the bone marrow. And you can have these pro-inflammatory um, responses in the bone marrow, which impair kind of response to treatment. And so why is that important? Because largely with antibodies, you should be able to manipulate these cells to make the marrow more favorable for response to the treatment. And I think this is gonna be a, a big way forward and we'll see um, different strategies for maximizing response and maintaining response long-term. And the good thing of these treatments will be that they won't be toxic, they'll, they'll be very well tolerated. So that's, uh, I, th I think, an important feature. The other thing that we're trying to look at is to use genetic sequencing data to look at the patterns of mutation in the bone marrow. And so why would that be any relevant to a patient? Well, we've been able to look after people who've had um, stem cell transplant with high dose melphalan, and you can see a signature that's driven by the exposure to the melphalan, which may be enhancing progression after a transplant and will lead us to think about the relevance and timing and which patient groups are suitable for um, stem cell transplantation, especially as we're getting these bispecific T cell engagers, which are changing the treatment paradigm. The other signature that you, you can see is associated with exposure to radiation. So rather kind of spookily, I guess, in a way, you can have radiation to just one site and then at relapse, all of the cells that are in the body carry the signature associated with exposure to the radiation. So what these two facts are telling you is that we should be moving away from these um, cytotoxic radiation approaches to treatment to something that's more um, or better tolerated by the body and it doesn't drive the pattern of mutations seen at relapse. And that's why I'm very hopeful for these monoclonal antibody approaches and using these more in the clinic in the future.